All right, I was asked to give a report on this Dremel. This is Dremel router table 231. Turns your handheld Dremel into a router. Has a big list of supported models on there. I can only tell you about what I have, which is an old model 395. Variable speed, workaday Dremel. As to the uh, actual contents, there's not much to it. You get an instruction manual, and you get a router table. No assembly required. All the moving parts are locked down. What do you get? Pretty straightforward plastic Dremel table. It's got your attachment for the Dremel goes in here couple holes on the flanges, put some screws in there, attach it to a 2x4. Clamp that fucker down. Pretty workable space. If you're working with big materials, you might run into some problems with these, but if you're working with big materials, you need a better router. or a full-size router. Um, for the 395 at least, you have to take off the collar on your Dremel. It uses this thread to attach. As far as functions, it's pretty straightforward. You get your uh, safety cover piece. It also has a removable core. You can get down inside there. You've got your guide, thumb, plastic thumb screws. They could have longer threads, they fall off a lot, but so far I haven't had a big problem with it. You got rotation, you loosen that guy out. Uh, this one moves back three different stages so you can set your angle, allow for more material depth. This one back here slides out, catch your material, so if you're doing cutting away. You know, a big chunk of the back of the stock, you're going to come out with a thinner, thinner piece on the other side so you can adjust this to catch that stock and give something to support, be supported while you're ripping it. Assembly is kind of a pain. Mostly because your, uh, your stopper, whatever, the chuck lock, starts to rub against the inside of this and you gotta make sure that the chuck lock aligns when you finish. Otherwise uh, you won't be able to change bits if you can't reach in there. So you get her screwed in. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it but there's a giant hex bolt inside here. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot to tell you, it comes with a wrench. So, use that, grab the bolts on the inside of the mount, uh, mounting housing. That's what locks it in place. Not super easy to get to, but it's not super difficult again. That's going to be the main caveat I found with this thing in general. It's not perfect, but it's a modular tool, so you get what you you get a half of a good tool out of it with the convenience of still having a Dremel. You got an adjustment screw on the side here that puts pressure on the tool, holds it in place. You got another adjustment down here. This gives you fine adjustment up and down, so that lets you set your bit depth. Uh, incidentally, you probably want to put a bit in before you set the thing up unlike the way I did, because then you've got to reach in. Hold this thing down, get your Dremel wrench, hold the bit from sliding down inside there, tighten it all down at once. So I'll do that. Okay, so you got your bit in there, finally. You can see, got a 45 degree inch chamfer bit.
about about half the blade right up to the pilot uh, peg lined up with the fence. So let's see what you can do with this thing. Safety third. Put your guys in there. Blow out all the material left from the last time you used it. So you can see there, I ran into that problem. My clamp's in the way, so I ran into my stock, or my uh, board here ran into the clamp. So you gotta figure out your clamping situation if you can make good use of this, but um, it also has some very handy arrows here and here to let you know which way you should feed your material so that you're not fighting the, uh, you're going with the correct way for the spin of the bit. So there's, a uh, nice chamfer on uh, some bass wood. Sorry for my headlamp uh, quality light. Try it on plastic. Well, that would appear to be a uh, design flaw. <laughs> this fucking adjustment bolt just vibrated out of there. Don't think I had it cranked down too hard. So, again, not uh, super high production value. If you're gonna do that, you probably have a better tool than this already, but. And of course, I don't do, I'm new with plastic, so I went too fast and I melted it. But even so, let's see you got a reasonably clean there. Let's see if I can get that on macro. So as you can see here, I rushed it. Didn't get a very smooth edge. That's user error. I have some pieces here I did the other day that Got a pretty good consistent beveling on the front and back. There's the wood example. Not bad, good enough for me. I'm not a pro and uh, now I have a router table. So for 30 bucks, I'm sold. If it gets me through one project, I'm definitely sold. If it's usable more than once, well, I'll call that a fucking bargain.